I'm Jeff Alpin, the Big Game Hunter, the head coach for Job Search Coaching HQ.com. And I thought today, because I had a backlog of questions, I would do an AMA and ask me anything. Uh, six questions today, done no BS style. The, um, <laughs> the reminder to all of this is my mom. My mom would never sugarcoat anything. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do today. No BS, no sugar coating. The sugar I'm going to give you is the truth, okay? And I'm going to do it direct and to the point. First question, how do you cope with constant job rejection? Answer is really very simple. Keep coping with it. Get better. Give up. That's it. You have three choices here. Keep coping with it. Get better. And let me be clear, get better at job hunting or give up. That's it. Which one you choose, that's your choice. I'm not going to explain that to you now. You knew this answer going in. Why do you ask the question? Next question. How should I handle my recruiter that offered me a job when he monitors my job search profile and cross-questions me about being active during my notice period? What's unclear is whether this is a corporate recruiter or a third-party recruiter. Um, so I'm going to try and answer both. It starts off with the premise of by being active in the way you're being active, you're setting up a red flag for them. They are apparently noticing that maybe you're still out looking for a job. That makes the third-party recruiter nervous because they are at risk of losing a fee. It makes the corporate recruiter nervous because they are at risk of losing a fill. Now, if what you're doing is just chatting with friends online because you have more time, why the hell aren't you telling them this? It's really very easy. If they've got nothing to worry about, if they've got no reason to be fearful because this is you know, innocuous stuff, you just tell them, hey, look, I'm talking to people I know. I'm not out interviewing. But if you are out interviewing and it's a third-party recruiter, just very simply say, hey, look, it's none of your business. Seriously, it's none of your business. I've accepted the offer. And after that, it's all with me. If it's the corporate recruiter for the firm that you've accepted the position with, there you have a problem because they could turn around and rescind the offer. As such, you have to sound sincere. Say, look. I'm coming to work for you. What these other firms are doing, you know, really very simple. They're trying to sell me on new opportunities. I'm committed to you. The other thing you could do is defriend them, deconnect with them, something along those lines. And you, they have a written acceptance of their offer. And, you know, what's the problem? So you can deconnect with them. You know, sever the connection uh, on LinkedIn, defriend them on Facebook. Wherever you are, you don't want to be snooped on. Really simple. Next question. Actually, the next two are kind of linked with one another. How good is the idea to customize your resume for each job application? And what effect does a cover letter make? That's one group of questions. And the other one is, does anyone get any real value out of their LinkedIn profile? <sighs> Resumes are for when you are hunting for a job. LinkedIn is for when you want to be hunted or to build your business. Since I'm focusing on job hunters here, it's for when you want to be hunted or are open to being hunted uh, for another role. That doesn't mean you're active in any way, shape, or form. It just means a quality profile is going to allow people to get an idea of what you're capable of so opportunities land in your lap. That is what you want, because the person who gets ahead isn't always the smartest to work the hardest. It's the one that remains alert to opportunity. And if all you're doing is waiting until your job hunting to do things, you know, you're, you're operating at the worst possible time. So, yes, people get value out of their LinkedIn profiles because opportunities, business opportunities, job search opportunities are presented to them as a result of their profile. As for customizing each uh, the resume for each application, that's the only thing you should do. I'm telling you, 
if you just spam the same resume out over and over again, like I've said millions of times, the broken watch is right twice a day. And if you think people are going to call you because you submitted a resume that doesn't fit for a job, you're absolutely a moron. So get it through your head that you have to do some work in order to get these interviews. What you need to do very simply is make sure your resume demonstrates a fit. As for the cover letter part of this, the cover letter should call attention to some of the things in the resume and in the job description and demonstrate the fit. And the approach that I always tell people to take is when you get to the second section, the first one basically says, I'm forwarding my resume to you because of a position that I saw advertised or because I'm being introduced to you by so-and-so. I understand these are the requirements of the position. Next to them, I'm indicating how long and how frequently I perform that function uh, or utilize that skill. And in the left-hand column, what you're doing is listing the requirements of the position and the functionality that you would perform. And in the right-hand column, indicating how long and how recently you've done that. If you don't have the skill, you don't include it. If you don't have the experience and the specific thing that is mentioned in the ad, you don't include it. But not cover letter, but cover email. That is, the body of, of the email demonstrates your fit. So that's the way you lay it out. Then you conclude in the third paragraph by calling attention to, uh, if I haven't heard from you in two days, I'll, I'll give you a quick call. Maybe we can set up a time to speak. So that's the next two, two questions. Uh, oh, it's actually seven questions. Cool. Uh, why does it seem hard to find a job when you really need it, but not when you don't? Okay, so right now we have good economic times, uh, and when you don't need a job, when you need a job, you know, firms question why you're unemployed. That's bias number one in all of this. Bias number two is they've been ingrained to believe that the active job seeker is less less desirable than the quote-unquote passive job hunter. That is the person who's working in their job, doing great work, and really isn't trying to find work. Now, whether that's true or not, that's the nonsense that they believe. Obviously, I don't believe it. But this is what firms believe. And thus, they believe that if they reach out to you and recruit you for their particular position, even if your resume were on a job board at the same time without your name on it, and they didn't know that that was you, they believe that because they sought you out, that makes you a superior candidate. Stupid, I must tell you, absolutely stupid. Makes no sense. And I'll just say, this is the main reason, especially if you've been out for a while, they assume you've been out on interviews and other people have interviewed you and rejected you. Why is it going to be any different with them? So it's real important to put yourself in the position of being found, which goes back to the question of the LinkedIn profile. You always want to have a great LinkedIn profile that draws people to you like a bear to honey. So uh, let's see now. What is the best response to the question if you get hired? What is the guarantee you will work for us if you get a higher salary offer from another company. You know, my first reaction is to say they want you to lie to them because would they do that? <laughs> you know, if they got an offer for more money doing the same work or better work, would they not jump? I think they would. But they're talking to you as a less experienced person, and they're uh, exerting pressure on them. So your responsibility is to lie to them because that's what they're demanding of you. Because the truth is, like I said, if you got a better offer at another organization, you would take it. And pro the probability is they're going to make a bad offer if they're asking a question like this. So what would you say to them? Really very simple. You know, I'm joining this organization and I'm making a commitment to this firm, period. That's it. No further explanation is necessary. What you have to do is to present it in a way that sounds sincere. So that in this way, sincerity 
is the most important thing here. So you know, if you extend an offer to me and I accept, I am making a commitment to your firm. Period. And you actually say, period. Okay? Next one, and this is the last one. Has a job offer ever left you feeling offended because the pay was too low or something else like that? This isn't my story because I've been self-employed for a long time. But people emotionally forget that this is business. And as such, as, as uh, Al Pacino said in The Godfather 3, uh, no, it's Godfather 1. It's it's business. It's not personal. He looked up at his brother at that point when he uh, determined he wanted uh, to take out a crooked cop and, and an opponent who tried to kill his father. So the very simple thing I would say is if you get emotional about this, it's because you become emotionally invested in the job. And frankly, you lost your leverage at that point because you've lost your objectivity. Maybe it's because you weren't as skilled as you thought you were. Did you do your research about your real value? Now, I'm not saying that you talked to a friend of yours who said, oh, you should be making such and such. You know this particular skill. No, the friend is, an, is another doofus just like you are. So don't kid yourself. Your friends know next to nothing. The only people who know your value is the market. And if you have four turn downs and you get a low offer, there's a message in that. You're not as good as you think you are at the value that you're claiming. So take that as information. Don't take it as fact. Take it as opinion. Don't take it as fact. And from there, you have to make a decision as to whether or not you really are worth that value. And there you can talk to a coach, a recruiter, not the recruiter who's representing you, because obviously they have a vested interest in you taking this job. A coach, a recruiter, uh, friends, not, not your wife, husband, or partner, because they may know as little as you do. But start talking to knowledgeable people in your field about what your real value is, and that will help you make a, a valid decision. So that's today's show. I hope you found it helpful. And if you're interested in my coaching you, reach out to me. Jeff Altman at TheBigGameHunter.us. In the subject line, put the word coaching, uh, and let's set up a time to speak. And if we're not connected on LinkedIn, send the connection request to me at LinkedIn.com forward slash IN forward slash TheBigGameHunter. Mention that you saw this show. I love knowing that I've been helpful to people. And then once we're connected, if you have a quick question, notice that these were all short. If you have a quick question for me, so you can message me through LinkedIn. Be happy to help you. Have a great day. Really, have a great day. Take care.